Yo, Sang Tea friends! I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are. Today, I bring you an exciting and fantastic game from round 24 of the 2019 Elite Team Championships in China, played by the Hangzhou Grandmaster Liu Ming against the Shanghai Grandmaster Sun Yongzheng. Before I begin, I just want to acknowledge that people have been asking me to do some English chess videos or translate my Chinese videos, but I haven't really been doing so. And I feel guilty because I absolutely agree it's important to spread the love to non-Chinese or English speaking players as well. And if you are a Chinese watching this video, congratulations for being part of this very kind, noble cause as well. Alright, without further ado, let's jump straight into business. The game opens with the center cannon attack and black responds with the classical screening horse defense. Except that goes for the quick push of the 7th pawn, a signal that he wants to steer the game towards sharper and more aggressive territory. In this position, the most common move for red is to push the 7th pawn as well, but red chooses the slightly more solid option, the development of his left horse towards the center, which means knight black now has the option of pushing the pawn on his third foul. But again, black plays the more aggressive and sharper riverbank jump of his horse. Preparing to push his seventh pawn to gain counterplay against red chariot, red pushes the center pawn, threatening to push the pawn further down, blasting open the center foul and attacking black's king. And horsey as well, of course. And what does black play? The quick push of the seventh pawn, and wow, fireworks are about to appear on the board. Red Chariot withdraws, attacking Black's horsey, and Black has a number of options here. For instance, Black could play the very direct pawn takes pawn, to which Red either has Chariot takes horse, or the immediate push of the center pawn, both of which leads to different complicated variations. In the game, alternatively, horsey takes pawn is also possible, but in the game, Black plays the retreat of the horsey, a more subtle move posing the chariot the question of where it wishes to go. The main line is in fact the sidestepping of the chariot to prevent the black pawn from capturing his pawn and advancing furthermore to attack the red horsey. The black pawn usually sidesteps and we have a different variation because in the game, Liu Ming chose to advance the chariot, a very double-edged move indeed that allows the black pawn to capture the red pawn with tempo attacking the red horsey. And what does red play? The quick charge of the center pawn. Whoa! Is that move even legal? A peace sacrifice! And black takes the horsey. But red responds with, push them baby! This move, pawn captures pawn, comes with a check against the black king. And black raises its left advisor, now the red pawn is under attack by black's horsey, so red sidesteps the pawn with check and black raises the elephant. And we have a position where black is up a piece, but red has pretty active pieces for compensation. Now red plays the only good move, the advancement of the horsey towards the center, controlling the center and restricting the movement of black's horses, as well as threatening to take black pawn with the cannon, of course. This position is quite tricky for black already, and the strongest move, which is not an obvious move at all, is in fact to raise the right black cannon, which has been played before, in particular by the Guangdong Grandmaster Chen Fujie in 2005, and this leads to an interesting but complicated variation which we shall not discuss. But I'm somewhat curious if Sun Yongzheng is aware of this move because he is, after all, a very experienced Grandmaster. And furthermore, the move he played in the game, the push of the 7th point, is in fact a very risky one from a strategic point of view, allowing the Red Chariot to develop with tempo, which is what Grandmaster Liu Ming plays indeed. And perhaps only now does Black realize that the natural move Pawn takes Elephant is not that desirable after all because red has the very strong move. Chariot moves to the third foul, 
attacking Black's horsey, which is already stranded. And now Black can capture the Red Advisor if he so wishes, but after the Red King recaptures, Black still has to address this threat of Chariot takes horsey. And if Black offers to trade chariots, Red accepts and simply advances the Red Horse solidifying the red pawn and threatening to capture the black elephant with tempo against the black horsey. Red has a clear advantage here. In the game, Sun Yongzheng did not capture the red elephant and instead chose to retreat his left cannon, which is an awkward move, attempting to create some tactics against Red's third foul, but Red simply takes the black pawn again threatening to take Black's horsey. Black sidesteps the cannon with a double attack on Red's chariots, hoping for some tactics to work out, but Red simply captures the, red, the Black chariot first, and Black captures the other Red chariot. And we have a position where Grandmaster Liu Ming is still down a piece, but his pieces are so active, and now Red retreats the chariot to attack the Black horse. And oh man, look at this black horsey. There is no place for it to escape. In fact, we see that black's pieces are simply discoordinated. This black cannon is just a target, and the black chariot is not developing anytime soon. In the game, black goes for a desperate move. Horse advances to the center, returning a piece for the red pawn to capture hoping for some counterplay, but Red's pieces are simply a picture of harmony here. Red plays pawn takes horse, and Black advances the horse, in an attempt to create a double attack against Red chariot and Red's horse. But Liu Ming has of course anticipated this, and he withdraws the chariot to attack Black's cannon. A very well assessed and calculated move indeed, because now Black is forced to capture the Red horse, and red captures the black cannon. We reach a simplified position where it seems that black has escaped the worst of the middle game crisis, but in fact the presence of the red center pawn is the decisive factor here, as we shall soon see. Black develops the chariot, and now red plays the only excellent move that opens the position for a strong attack. It is not a difficult move, but feel free to pause the video to find it. And if you just wish to enjoy the show, the move is Pawn takes Elephant. Whoa! Let's see what the threat is. If Black recaptures the pawn with the elephant, Cannon takes Elephant with check. And if Black raises the advisor, the Cannon can move to the second file, preparing to check with discovery attacks from all directions. For example, if Black offers the trade of Chariot, then Cannon goes to the bottom rank with check. The King has to move up, and Red has the very strong Chariot check here, forcing the Black King to move up the board once again. And now the Black Chariot is in fact not protected by the pin horsey in the center. So Red simply retreats the Cannon to check, forcing the advisor to retreat. Chariot checks, and now with a discovery attack black's chariot, picking up the black chariot, making use of the pin in the center. In the game, black chose to advance the rook down to the red's third rank to attack red's cannon, hoping to put up a more resilient defense. And now, with the red cannon under attack, Liu Ming plays yet another strong move, not Pontic's advisor by the way. For the Black King can sidestep with some counter-attacking chances. But instead, Chariot takes Elephant. Whoa! Threatening Pawn takes Advisor, followed by Chariot takes Advisor. Checkmate. If Black moves out the Black King now, Red can simply retreat the cannon, and the threat of Pawn takes Advisor remains, while Black has no attack attacking ideas whatsoever. In the game, Black plays a slightly more resilient move, retreating the Black Horse, trying to eliminate the Red Pawn as quickly as possible, at the same time still threatening the Red Cannon. Sounds like a good idea, 
except Liu Ming plays the absolutely brilliant move. Feel free to pause the video here if you want to find it yourself. And for those who just want to enjoy the show, the move is Chariot retreats to attack the Black Horsey. Wow, just wow. Leaving both the Red Pawn and Red Cannon under attack, but Shun Yongzheng only then realized that neither move is desirable. If Horse takes Pawn, Red has a very strong move here. Chariot moves to the 8th file, attacking the Black Cannon and threatening to check the Black King on the bottom ring. If Cannon takes Cannon, then Chariot goes to the bottom ramp with check. Black is forced to retreat his Cannon and now Chariot takes Cannon. And Black has simply no useful moves left to make in this position. As such, Black instead chooses to advance the horse, hoping to advance the horse further to attack Red's pieces. But here Red plays an absolutely phenomenal move, forcing Black to resign. This is the move of the game and I challenge you to pause the video to find it. And for those who just want to enjoy the show, the move is... Cannon moves to the second foul. Whoa! Please, Grandmaster Liu Ming, just... Whoa! If you found this move, congratulations! In this position, Black resigns because there is little way to stop the double threat of the smothered cannon checkmate on the bottom rank and the threat of pawn takes advisor, making use of the king's control over the center foul to deliver the chariot checkmate on the bottom rank. And if Black chooses to escape first with the king, then simply chariot checks. The king has no safe place to go, and if the cannon blocks, then simply pawn takes cannon, renewing the threat of pawn rush, leading to a forced checkmate, all making use, of course, of the king's center control. What a masterpiece and a master class attacking game by Grandmaster Liu Ming. This will remain in the collection of best games from this tournament for sure. I hope you have enjoyed the game much more than my girlfriend did. Thank you very much.